So I just finished Halo of its campaign, and in this video I'm going to answer a bunch of questions you guys left on my channel about the campaign. So let's dive right into it. So if you want to know more, stay tuned throughout the whole video to understand all the details. How's it going Halo fans? Kevin here once again giving you another informational video and yeah, I got a chance to play through Halo Infinite's campaign before release. So in this video I'm planning to give you my initial thoughts and impressions of the campaign itself. No spoilers by the way, where this is a completely spoiler free experience, first impressions kind of video. And then in the second half of this video, I'll be answering some questions I asked you guys on my page as well. So it's a bit of a community interaction with this whole thing as well. So before we get into it guys, if you guys enjoy these kind of discussion videos, make sure you tap that like button, let me know you want to see some more content like this, and it greatly helps out the video and channel get a better place within that YouTube algorithm. If you want to stay updated with everything going on with Halo as a ramp up to the official release of Halo Infinite, make sure you tap subscribe. So let's get right into the content here. So now the first question I'm sure you're all asking is, Kevin, is it good? Yeah, it's... It's real good. It's kind of hard for me right now to put it all in words of how I feel about this campaign since I literally just finished playing the final mission like 20 minutes ago. I was just sitting in the back of my chair going like, wow, that was a hell of a ride. So when they said it was a chief focus story, they definitely meant it. You're with chief the entire way. It's not like Halo 5 where you're dividing up time and things like that. You're just playing as Master Chief with your new buddy, the weapon going through this crazy world on Zeta Halo and basically just trying to stop the bad guys from doing bad things. When 343 stated that they took strong influence from Combat Evolved when it came to the gameplay and storytelling of Halo Infinite, they really meant it with this game. It's not some like over the top, overly complicated story that's going on with Halo Infinite's sto initial story release. It's very much like Combat Evolved where like, you don't have to know every single detail of every single thing that's happening. You just need to know that like, that's the bad guy. He knows he's going to do bad things to you and you need to stop it. Like in Combat Evolved, did you know there was like a hierarchy of prophets and all this other kind of stuff going on with the Covenant? No, you just knew that there were aliens that wanted to kill you. And the story of Halo Infinite does a super job of really setting the stage of Halo moving forward as well. When 343 stated that this is going to be a good starting point for a lot of newcomers or returning players that have been kind of out of the loop for the last few years or so, they really meant it. They did a great job of doing a lot of world building with the story as well. Though it didn't really feel like it, as me as a returning player who's played every single Halo game multiple times over, it didn't feel like I was getting a redundant story or anything. Yeah, there were certainly some beats where I felt very nostalgic, but I didn't feel like I was being retold everything that happened previously within Halo. I think they really kind of just trimmed the fat, which is kind of like the general theme of Halo Infinite. They trimmed all the fat that was added between Reach and Halo 5 and just went like, what's true? to the core of Halo, and that's exactly what Halo Infinite brings. My biggest concern with the gameplay side of things was the open world of Halo Infinite, that the last time we had this kind of experience was in ODST. And for the most part with ODST, like, yeah, like the open world stuff was like a cool immersive kind of experience, but the gameplay itself, I felt to be incredibly boring. So when I heard that Halo Infinite is doing like an open world kind of gameplay style, not true open world, but open world style, I was a little concerned about it. And let me tell you guys right now, there are zero concerns to have. This world is packed full of things to do in this game. Just so I could complete the game within a reasonable amount of time before when this embargo of me being able to play and then me being able to talk about it was released that, you know, I kind of had to skip a lot of content within the open world to kind of get to like the main story beats. There was just so much stuff to do within this campaign. This is absolutely, if you're gonna like try to do all the side missions, absolutely the longest campaign we've ever had in a Halo game. Forget all your preconceived notions of how a Halo campaign is meant to be played because Halo Infinite is completely different, new and unique in, in all the best ways. For the first half of the game, I was doing a lot of like forward operating bases, kind of stuff like they talked about previously. These are kind of like checkpoint locations where you can fast travel to and things like that. They really do a great job of kind of just giving you a nice point to go to within the world. And then I was like, dang, if I'm trying to make this video in time, I need to finish this game up fast. And from me to kind of skip most of like the second half of the game, at least the content that was available. I mean, according to the game, I only completed like 30 some odd percent of the game and it took me like 10 and a half hours to play through it all. So there is a 
lot of stuff to do within the open world. Now, I know a lot of concerns within the open world is that we've seen the big emphasis on the Pacific Northwest biome and people were worried about it being feeling monotonous, really, when it comes to the gameplay or just like the environments you play in. I never really felt that. I never really felt that like, the environments that you fight in are definitely like Pacific Northwest based, but I live in the Pacific Northwest and there's a lot of variety within the world here. Like there's not like, you know, snowy mountaintops and like sun setting beaches and things like that. Not that drastic of a change. If you're thinking about like what kind of biomes are in this game, think about the mission Halo from Combat Evolved, right? Where a lot of it's kind of like woodland kind of areas. And then you have like these interior sections that you go into that are much more Forerunner themed. And then you have like these rocky areas and things like that. So it's a lot of that kind of feel, but then you also throw into like some of the Forerunner sections have very banished feel to them as well. And all the locations feel rather unique as well, which is a huge, you know, awesome job by 343 because without having these drastically different environments, it's very important to have like the environment itself or at least like geometry of things to feel unique. And you definitely feel that as well. They lend itself to certain types of gameplay where like even though you might be fighting through trees and stuff like that it plays different because of the way like the pillars are the way the terrain is the way the cover is and things like that i did not feel like there was any kind of monotony between the whole thing so let's answer some of those questions you guys gave me as well a lot of really great questions by the way on here saying what kind of multiplayer unlocks can we expect to earn from campaign i'm hopeful some of it it will at least be armor, but I'm worried that it might all just be coatings and emblems. And yeah, for traditionally in Halo, we've kind of earned something right from playing the campaign, uh, but we will be earning things within the campaign. There actually are specific locations de designated on the map as well. They have like little icons on there. You can go there, unlock a crate, you got some new cosmetics for the game. Now, if you do a quick Google search, you might be able to find these leaks that are actually on the internet right now. Most of these unlocks are coatings. Some of them are stances, some of them are emblems and things like that, but there doesn't really look to be like any kind of armor set in particular. Now, could that happen in the future? Definitely could. I would like to see that happen, but for right now, it seems to be like kind of coatings on the main thing. Now, I did not click on every single cosmetic, so there might be something that's hidden in there that I don't know about. Because like I said, I didn't do everything within the game because I just wanted to play through the main story to get this video out in time because this game is so expansive. It's insane. Caleb Strickland asks, is there a cliffhanger ending? Well, you know, I obviously can't spoil the ending for you guys because that would just be really rude of me to say this is a spoiler free review and actually say a spoiler. I'll just say that the game ended is pretty much as I expected. Thunder asks, is the flood in the game? Again, spoilers, dude. I can't talk about if, it, if they are or not in the game. And honestly, would you want that revealed if they are in the game, right? Like, would you want that? Wouldn't you want that experience that reveal? Like, you don't want to know that stuff before the game's actually out. That would just be like a total bummer. Snyder Odin asks if enemies will be utilizing vehicles, especially ground vehicles, and concerns if the map and ground terrain is doesn't really fit the vehicle gameplay too much. And just like in every Halo game, guys, previously, yes, the AI do use vehicles. And we saw with the Banshee within the trailer, and I will say that there are elements in the game as well that where you do have to fight the Banshee that are in vehicles as well. And there's one pretty cool fight in particular as well. But when it comes to the terrain and if it's friendly for vehicle play, it definitely is for how open this world is. It actually is really compact with a lot of things that can get in the way of vehicles. But I never really felt like I was like struggling to get through the map in particular. Maybe with a tank because it's so bulky and kind of tough to traverse terrain and things like that. But ultimately I was able to kind of just play the game however I wanted. And sometimes I grabbed a vehicle and sometimes I killed a lot of things with those vehicles. Liam Tucker asks, do you think they're going to add more weapons for the campaign or enemies we have not seen yet? I think many weapons such as the Spiker, Brute Plasma Rifle, Blue Shot, and plasma rifles are being left out. I feel as if the brutes may be feeling like the elites or humans, if they are holding pulse carbines or commandos, it might ruin the immersion a bit. So when it comes to content, at least like weapon wise within this game, um, I'm gonna say that like, for the most part, everything that you've seen in the game so far is that's that's the sandbox pretty much. Like whatever in the multiplayer is pretty much in the campaign as well. 
though there are some specific parts as well where you can actually kind of grab some more weapon variants which 343 stated previously that there are weapon variants within Halo Infinite. We've probably you might have even seen some clips and stuff like that going around YouTube that these weapon variants are actually in multiplayer as well for like custom games and things like that. But basically there's like a part where I was just kind of traversing the world because I was like in between missions and then like I was kind of walking around. I killed some enemies that were just kind of hanging around. I was like, oh look, there's a forerunner door in the middle of this like rock wall. Why is it doing there? What's going to? Oh, I got some weapon variants. That's pretty cool. Got like more powerful weapons that you would normally have. Like, so the stuff like that is definitely within the campaign. So it rewards you for exploration. Now, when it comes to like ruining the immersion or something like that, like having brutes holding brute type weapons, I think the difference is that it's with the Banish. It allows 343 to not have to bring those weapons in because the Banish are kind of a scavenging kind of group. They don't really have like a main source of production. At least that's kind of my understanding with the Banish. I'm not like a lore kid like in Xperia or Halo Cannon, they might be the big guys that kind of ask about that kind of stuff. But from my experience, that like the Banished are meant there to kind of be like a scavenging group to kind of grab and pick up whatever they have, which if they defeat the UNSC, which they did, which is where we're kind of setting up the campaign, they would have UNSC weapons and they're trying to take advantage of that as well. Grunt comms officer, so happy to have such a high tier grunt in my chat here guys, but will the Scarab boss fight return? That's uh, some specifics I can't really get into. Like if it is in there, I can't tell you. And if it isn't in there, I don't want to lead you guys down the way we're building up some type of expectations in some capacity. Is there or is there going to be a campaign theater mode this time around? I think it would be a missed opportunity this time around with how beautiful this game looks. And I 100% agree that a campaign theater mode would be absolutely amazing for this game. Not just because of like how good it looks or just having a campaign theater is great, but like with Halo, the way Halo Infinite plays out, that like there is so much user choice within this game. And there's so many different ways to go about, you know, attacking bases and going about missions that like each person's playthrough is going to be inc incredibly unique. And there's so many crazy things you can pull off within, within this game. It's just insane. But if there is a theater mode within the campaign, I feel like 343 3 would have talked about this by now. And you know, we've had the theater mode right now in, in multiplayer. And if you guys have played around with the theater mode in, in multiplayer, uh, you'd probably be like, yeah, it's probably best you don't. The best thing theater mode in multiplayer is good for right now is really just grabbing screenshots. If you're trying to actually like record gameplay or look at things, it's kind of a mess. And also the way that the campaign is structured, it doesn't really work like how it did like in Halo 3, right? Where you have this mission, that mission, that mission. Like it's all kind of interconnected with this world that like there isn't like a true like stopping point. I mean, there are like load screens and stuff like that within the campaign, for at least from my experience, but there really isn't like a clear cut stopping point that like will take you to the next mission kind of thing like we've had traditionally. So would like a theater mode session just last as long as you were like logged into the campaign, which could be multiple hours long? Blue Eye Studio asks, is there a third faction? This is an important question as well because having that third faction within Halo's story has really lent itself to be a much more unique experience, right? Because with Combat Vault, it was the human I see versus the aliens. And the aliens want to kill the humans, so you gotta kill the aliens. Pretty straightforward, things we've always played before. But then when they threw in the space zombies with the flood, that third faction really created like a unique dynamic which lends itself to like this epic story, right? Like especially in Halo 3, where like the elites joined in with the humans because of that enemy of my enemy is a friend kind of uh, story arc kind of thing right there that if there is a third faction, it would create a nice good bit of tension in some unique situations. I saw some comments to this post as well within the thread saying that like, yeah, it's like the Harbinger and that and the skimmers and things like that. And yeah, yeah, there are new species, but they don't really act like a new faction. Oftentimes you're fighting those skimmers along with the banished as well. So it really just feels like I said, like a very trimmed the fat down story where it's like, those are the bad guys, stop them from doing the bad things and kill everything and you're like gonna be good. And that's kind of how the story plays out. Next question is, is what happens to Atriox? He's such a badass character. I mean, that's more spoiler territory right there, but I'll just tell you that uh, you'll find out. Sparthawk122 asks, why is this the only Halo game to have zero blood decal slash splatter? Even Halo 5 had blood splatter on the ground with the same classification of rated T. And this is likely mean no flood due to the lack of gore. 
Now I know the common conception of why like the original Halo games were rated M was because of the flood and being kind of gory in a way. But I've never really felt like Halo was like a truly like an M rated game. Even games like Gears of War, right? Body parts flying, blood splatter on the screen, just like chainsawing people in half. Pretty brutal stuff. That's definitely an M rated game. You don't do that kind of stuff in Halo. Halo's a pretty mild M game, if that. And plus being rated T, I think does better as a free to play model to get more people involved with the game as well. So that's probably another reason why. Though from my experience, the campaign felt very Halo. I don't really need to have like blood splatter and decals and stuff like that on the screen. Though I would say that uh, experience of like, you know, when you shoot a character, blood splatters, like when you kill them, like it's kind of like a bit of an explosion kind of thing. You get that experience still without having like blood splattering out. Like you shoot the back of a grunt, their methane canister blows up, they go flying across, it's super epic. When you break shields, you have like this big explosion that happens to signify that they're one shot and things like that. Like I never really felt the lack of satisfaction from getting the kill because it was like the lack of blood and things like that. Uh, I've never really felt like Halo was much of a gory game anyways in the first place. Because not very many people know that Combat Evolved was actually rated T like only like months before the release of the game, it got rated M. So definitely like there's a possibility for the Flood to return in Halo Infinite if they do. I can't say if they are or, or not. I mean IGN did say that the Flood are alluded to but they didn't show up within the first half of the game. Halo Wars 2 is rated T and they had the Flood in the game there as well. They had some pretty like kind of like you know gory looking cutscenes and stuff like that. So I don't think the rating of the game will hold back the Flood from returning to the game. And well that's Halo Infinite's campaign kind of in a nutshell. Spoiler free. I hope that I didn't ruin anything for you guys. Guys, but trust me, you guys are going to be in for an awesome experience when Halo Infinite fully launches on December 8th. So if you guys are new to the channel or missed any content from me recently, check out this playlist right here. Got a link to all my Halo Infinite news and informational videos we've been uploading daily about. Thank you so much for watching. I greatly appreciate it. I'll catch you all in the next one. Peace out.